Hello Slicey Dicers, this is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Kershaw Natrix Carbon Fiber. They put carbon fiber in the name because it's got these cool looking carbon fiber overlays on it, but that is by no means the most important thing about this new version of the Natrix. The most important thing about this new Natrix is it's not assisted, guys. It runs on KVT ball bearings. No more spring assist for the Natrix. Hoorah! There are still spring assist versions, speed safe versions available, but those are getting phased out. So shortly you'll see all of them running on these ball bearings, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I admit I have no experience with the previous Natrix because of the speed safe. I've got other speed safe Kershaws, and I don't know, that one just didn't really appeal to me that much. I don't hate the speed safe as much as everyone else does, I think. I actually am, am relatively okay with it. But a lot of places, it's illegal to have it, to any assist whatsoever, so it's completely out for a lot of people. And, you know, I am a knife nerd. I prefer to have my own control, I guess. Kind of like how I like manual shift cars better than automatics. It's kind of the same way. But, so I have no previous, or no experience with the previous version. But I wanted to get this one because I have two other kind of natrix -y versions on order. I have the D2 with the copper handles, which I'm really excited about that one. And probably even more excited about the bare knuckle, which is a USA made, basically larger version of the Natrix. So I wanted to get my hands on one of the current kind of standard ones, and I like the look of this one. No assist. $43, not a bad price. I was on it. And I'm glad I got it. It's, it's got a couple little flaws, as a lot of the Chinese made Kershaws do, but uh, minor ones, really. And it's, it's all right. I actually do really, really like this knife quite a bit. Let's do some stats before we get too much farther. We have an overall length of seven and a half inches, a blade length of three and a quarter inches. You have a blade thickness of just 0.11 inches, so it's a pretty thin, slicey little blade, and handle thickness of 0.43 inches. But the real like party trick of this thing is only 2.9 ounces. It's really, really light. Let's look and see. I don't remember if that is lighter than the original one. Let me look that up really quick. I happen to have it up here. Um, nope, same weight. So same weight as the original one. Uh, I had, like, again, I hadn't held the original one, so I wasn't sure. But really good weight. And uh, obviously, you know, it's got all these carbon fiber bits for that 43 bucks. We'll get more into that in a moment. But first of all, let's do some size comparisons here. Uh, first of all, we will compare it against another Kershaw that I love. The Kershaw Knockout and M390 from USA Made Blade. Uh, as you can see, pretty similar overall length, uh, but this is obviously a much beefer, beefier knife, much uh, taller blade and all that. Um, let's compare it against the Steel Will Modus. Oh, wow, I hadn't put these two next to each other before. Huh, pretty similar price. I think this is begging for a comparison review, don't you guys? Yeah, that'll be coming up. Look at the blade shape, similar and everything. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. I'd never put these two side by side together before, and I'm just realizing how very similar they are. And uh, yeah, that, that's going to be coming up, I'm sure. Your Ontario Wrap Model 2. And the Wrap Model 1. So it's kind of right between those, as you'd expect, as it is in blade length and everything. And we will do, we're going to do a few on this one. The Rake P801, I just hadn't used this one in a while, so I kind of wanted an excuse to drag it out here. Very similar in size to the P801. And then we'll do our two standards and we'll move on. How about that? Nope. We have the, the uh, Spyderco Delica 4. I almost said Kershaw Delica 4. I got Kershaw in the brain. I guess it's early in the morning here. And your Spyderco PM2. So, again, kind of right between those two sizes. It's a very much in between sort of EDC size knife. Oh, one last one, I guess. We'll do one last one. I'm sorry if I'm boring you guys, but because this is very similar construction, this is this is kind of you know in the same vein as this. This is the Kershaw Atmos. So, made in the same place, carbon fiber overlay G10 kind of thing. All right. Let's move on and talk more about this. First of all, let's talk about the way this thing looks. 
I think it looks the bomb. I have to say, I really like the looks of this thing. I really, really do. The carbon fiber overlay is is nice. Yes, it is just an overlay, but it's 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 well enough done. It does look like decent carbon, and I love the color of this G10. You guys know I'm not a big fan of colors, but this is just a perfect color. It's subdued, and what little bit will be sticking out of your pocket, which is absolutely nothing, but it does it matches. A pair of jeans which let's let's face it a lot of us wear a lot of jeans and it just kind of blends in with this gray you know coated pocket clip and the blue g10 this blue jean blue g10 or as my favorite movie would call it paravinko blue um it's uh it's it's it just blends in it just disappears i think that's really cool i i'm not usually a fan of coated blades but i love the look of the coating on this one we'll see how well it holds up long term because this is a budget knife but yeah, I've had I've had a couple other uh, coated Kershaws and they they held up all right. So we'll see. Um, but I love the look of that and the way they carry it. It's not just on the blade; it's on the pivot. You know, both sides of the pivot. It's it's on the lock bar. It's on the the pocket clip. It's just it's really it's really pretty knife. It's a really well done knife. Just looks alone, this thing is worth the forty three bucks. It's a, it's a hot looking knife. I do have to say. Very much enjoy it. Uh, quality wise, uh, pretty darn good. Blade centering, perfect. The lockup and everything is perfect. Um, you know, detent's pretty good. It, the lockup is a little bit late. I will say that it's like fifty percent. I prefer to see a little less than that, just because it gives you some room to wear in. But I'm just being picky now. Uh, there are a couple sharp edges though. I would have liked to have seen them chamfer the inside of this G10 a little bit. You can definitely feel that. That's slightly annoying, but um, it's it's not horrid. And this knife is actually this also falls in the quality category. Very easy to take apart. Had no problems doing that. So I, I did take it apart just to confirm a few things because again I hadn't held a Natrix before, and I didn't oil it up or anything. I just took it apart, and put it back together, and uh, it's easy enough to take apart. If you can, you can just knock these down. But, and I may do that, but I don't know. I probably won't. I say I'm going to do a lot of things like that, and then I just don't ever bother to do it because I get busy. But, because it's it's well enough as it is. But quality-wise, pretty good for 43 bucks. No real huge complaints, and it and it just looks fantastic. The blade, uh, it does have the one big flaw out of the gate, I have to say, as most Chinese Kershaws have. 8CR13 MOV. Wah, wah. Yeah, I, I do wish it had better steel. This does mitigate that a bit. One of the things that annoys me about 8CR even more than than the fact that the steel's fairly soft is that it corrodes uh, quite a bit in my experience. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just having bad luck, but a lot of my 8CR... I have D2 stuff that doesn't corrode nearly as much as 8CR does. This has a coating on it, so that's been mitigated a bit. So I can forgive that a bit. As far as sharpening it and stuff, yeah, I'm going to have to do that a fair amount, but not the end of the world. Uh, it does have a decent sharpening choil to allow that, so that's good. Uh, I will say, it is a pretty slicey little blade, about 22 thousandths behind the edge, so not bad at all, and only 0 0.11 inch uh, blade stock, so it's pretty thin, slicey blade, that's cool. Uh, it is it does have enough of a tip for piercing. I love what they did here, how that fuller just kind of comes in and makes that cool looking little arrowhead kind of point just aesthetically i just think that's really cool looking it doesn't in the the fuller doesn't seem to get in the way a lot while cutting yeah i was cutting double layer cardboard with it and and then you could feel the drag of it when it hit that but anything below that it was fine uh, and i guess this is probably for weight savings and it does get really really this is a stupid light knife for its size so i kind of forgive that uh, ergonomically, pretty darn good, I have to say. Uh, it's very comfortable in the hand. This jimping, they nailed it with this jimping. This is really good. It's the perfect blend of sharp enough to be really useful, but not so sharp that it's going to hurt your thumb. And you can really lock into this thing. It's really, really good. If I have one complaint, well, two little complaints ergonomically, I already mentioned that's a little sharp up here if you're, if you're grabbing it back here. And also... The lock bar in this very cool subframe lock it is uh, a little a little sharp. Yes, this is a subframe lock. I think I skipped over that. So as you can see, G10 carbon, you know, overlay 
scales uh, on and on this side that's all there is there's nothing else there and then on this side you've got this little kind of bolt and frame lock which is it's pretty neat i do like the sub frame lock thing as the knockout has i've my last two kershaws in a row have had that not that uh sub frame lock and i'm i'm becoming a fan and the next two i've got coming have it so i i guess i'm a sub frame lock guy now but yeah this uh it, it works really well might as well talk about deployment while we're here talking about the subframe lock. It works great. This is, it's not, you know, fall shutty, but you can shake it shut. It is running on bearings, as I said, and for $43, that's completely fine. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun little knife to use. It really, really is. Uh, I have no complaints about the deployment whatsoever for the price of it. Uh, the jipping on this is a bit, a bit sharp, but that's not the end of the world. Um, Carry wise, oh my gosh, this thing is an awesome carry knife for its size. It really, really is. As I said, sub three ounces, cool deep carry pocket clip, small deep carry pocket clip. I like that. I like that it's small because a lot of times I think that uh, some companies overdo it with a pocket clip. If you make a deep carry pocket clip on a sub three ounce knife and the pocket clip is this long, you've kind of defeated the purpose of having the, the deep carry pocket clip and making it kind of, you know, subtle because uh, then you've got this big giant clip they put a clip that's that, that's long enough that's perfectly fine for the design of this knife or for the weight and stuff of this knife it's perfectly fine it works great and it looks cool it does have the kershaw name on it that doesn't really bother me that much it's it's fairly fairly subtle but if someone sees that clip and they know what kershaw makes they're going to know you got a knife in your pocket instead of being some other little thing but i don't think that's terribly the end of the world but gotta mention it um yeah, I think I think we're at the point of the conclusion on this thing. Conclusion is, uh, it makes me really excited for the future ones. I I like this one. It's it's really good looking, and it's super nice. And even with the eight CR, it's it's a keeper. It's worth keeping for sure. Uh, that said, it does just kind of fuel my desire for the new ones for the D two with the copper. That's going to be cool. It's going to look delightfully shitty in a short amount of time because copper patinas and stuff and it, it's it's meant this this knife is the the copper version is meant to patina and look like crap after a while and i'm excited about that and then the bare knuckle is just this but bigger and made in the usa with better steel and better materials i'm super excited about that one too so again this is my first experience with the natrix and uh, I, it doesn't make me wish that I'd have bought one of the speed safe ones. I don't think I was missing out on much there. But now with the new ball bearing and this uh, new cooler look, it's pretty nice. And when the $30 one also goes KVT, that'll be cool too. So um, that may be a good Christmas present knife or something like that. I know we're only in what July and I'm talking about that, but I think I had, I think all every, every male in my family expects they're going to get a cool knife from me. So... Yeah, some of them may be getting, uh, maybe getting the, the $30 version of this when it goes to the ball bearings. Great improvement from Kershaw. Could have done more. I would love to see it in 14C28, but for some reason they don't make that in the Chinese ones. I don't know why other Chinese companies make eight, make 14C28. Rake, for example. I know you can get it over there. I'm going to say it every time I review a, an 8CR anything. I just switch to 14C28 and I would stop complaining, but... All right, it's other other than that, it's still a great great knife. I highly recommend it for a budget Kershaw. It's a it's a it's a pretty darn good one. It's uh, I like it at, at least as much as the Atmos, which was probably my favorite budget Kershaw up to that point. I had the same complaints about it because it's HCR, but uh, really really cool knife. Go out and get you one. I've been Brian. Have a good one.